Hello dear viewers welcome to my channel science to technology in today's show science thursday we're going to talk about welding so let's dive right into it well what exactly we are talking about we are talking about a way to bond two metals together think of it this way we had metals for a very long time but we did not had a way to make a one coherent large piece for example let's say you make a forge a big unit but here's the let's say it's not big enough what will you do you will add another piece but in olden days all we had is basically bolts and rivets now bolts are very good because they are removable and non destructive side effect they are heavy basically you may not think of it in this way but imagine you have a bridge and you are thinking about okay this is a bridge heavy duty solid stuff and you have to add let's say 5000 volts 5000 volt how heavy that thing will become that's a very serious amount of weight that you will add uh, then you uh, go back to shipyards and uh, they realized that it cannot be this heavy so they invented rivets now rivets are very good but they are still adding a giant chunk of material every place basically like you have a metal plate you have a two metal sheet and then you have multiple uh, small bolts which are like you know clamping from both side it's a very heavy uh, thing so fundamentally these two things they have the advantage that you can undo them basically you can drill out the rivets and you can unbolt the bolts that's the good thing side effect uh, they are very heavy clunky and not uh, very efficient so to say so alternative to these two things generally we use welding now welding requires two things generally it can be done with one only but generally it requires two things one is high temperature why well metal is solid solid means it is made out of something that is very resistant in room temperature but what happens if you increase the temperature high here's the everything melts flat out everything in this universe melts at around 3 to 5000 degrees celsius everything will melt flat out so metal also has something like that so you can start as low as like around 800 degrees celsius and go around 15 to 1600 degrees celsius and at that point in time you can weld almost everything 3000 degrees as if you want to be extra careful you are welding with tungsten or something like that at that point everything can be uh, welded if you have high enough temperature so that's requirement number 1 second many time you are welding two pieces together and if you uh, directly try to weld them you can do that but that one part will become weak because inherently you took metal from plate 1 to plate 2 and then you bonded them together inherently that will become a weak spot so many times people add filler basically you will see uh, people who are doing tick welding they are like poking with a rod that rod is filler so these two things are generally core requirement of a welding system another aspect of that because our atmosphere is made out of reactive oxygen and you can understand the fact that every metal rusts fundamentally you have to protect it against that but here's the because you are talking about such a high temperature even nitrogen becomes reactive so not only that there is a, a small percentage of your atmosphere which is reactive oxygen there is inherently large percentage of nitrogen which is also reactive so fundamentally you have to create a way to shield this puppy shield is in such a way that it does not become corroded basically you are welding it but it will not be a weld it will be literally a uh, basically rusted spot where you welded because again high temperature high speed reaction a reactive atmosphere outcome rust so fundamentally you have to shield this puppy and this is much more a permanent option basically you better be damn sure that you want to do this because once you do this and if it's a welding is done good you can take a ultrasound and scan this puppy you will not find a seam that's the whole point that's why it's bonding together on a molecular level that's why melting it such a uh, you know crucial thing is basically like forging ice like how you can forge a ice and it will look like eh, it looks like you know one continuous piece same will happen with metal but again temperature required was much higher so this is a very permanent option like again you want uh, you know uh, the ability to unlock and lock thing you can go with nuts and bolts you want semi permanent you're going to go with rivets but you want absolutely sure this is what i want go with welding and it's also lighter now let's start with the basic the, i can guarantee this that you have seen this what we call stick welding basically you have a dude has a clamp uh, has a work piece and there is a stick that magically disappears so you like prr, stick disappear prr, stick disappear so what's happening there well it's a simple system you are using electricity's advantage uh, basically electricity's property of creating arcs for heating now why not resistant heating resistant heating is not that high temperature it's not like uh, if you try to use resistance heating for very high temperature it's very difficult to do however if you create arc even with low amount of current basically low wattage you can achieve very high temperature so that's the whole point that's why we want to go with arc rather than resistive heating so we use arc and the ability to ludicrously uh, you know heat things up how hot 
very hot you will not have an issue where it's like you know metal is resisting you it's like metal cannot handle this puppy so flat out we use arc for heating and on top of that uh, because we are using electricity generally we close loop this puppy so sometimes dc is used because some metals are very uh, fancy and reactive like aluminum we generally use ac current so it does not create an oxidization layer on either the electrode or the work surface so ac and dc sometimes you use and there is a like a knob on your machine that will say uh, basically this electrode part is it positive or is it negative is it running on ac or is it running on dc so generally there's a lot of setting there so we generally loop this puppy and the reason for looping is that it also makes it safe you can touch this puppy you will not get electrocuted while it may have like few kilowatts of electricity running through it so that's why we close loop the electricity another aspect is the rod is magic so the rod is basically made out of filler rod the thing that you are depositing there now these are selected like basically if you want to do with high carbon steel there will be a rod fine tuned for that puppy if you are like okay I, i'm dealing with a, uh, you know different kind of iron there is a different kind of mix for that so you have that puppy specifically fine tuned for that another aspect is it has a like a cement like coating to that now that's the magical aspect that's why this technology is so awesome that rod has the material uh, and it has the heat to create a weld but here's the deal how the heck are you gonna shield this puppy it's not like it's inside a vacuum chamber so how the heck are you gonna shield this puppy from the atmosphere the cement like uh, basically in hindi we call it masala uh, the stuff that is uh, basically on outside of this rod is a flux material now if you've paid attention in school you must have uh, realized that you can melt a little amount of solid and get an insane amount of gas so benefit of this puppy is this puppies react and they give off insane amount of gas now the gas have been specifically chosen so it does not react with the metal but it literally is like flushing away like you uh, that high heat and the amount of gas that has been generated it's creating a shielding area basically it's like you're like just blasting that area away so nitrogen and oxygen cannot reach your welding pot and uh, that whole hot reactive area is shielded while it cools down once it cools down it's like uh, then it cannot react anymore so at that point it's safe so while it's hot while it's reactive shielding is like i got you bro i got you that's the magical part of it all you have to have is the consumable which is the electric electrodes and electricity that's it done you can do welding anywhere on the planet including underwater so it's very simple it's very cheap however it's very hard to master simply because the rod length keeps changing so basically we'll start with a giant rod like one foot long it is best so if somehow you have to not only handle the z axis you also have to move in two dimension where you're doing the actual welding so it's a very easy to start very difficult to master like it takes years to master this puppy but this is a very good starting point if you're like hey i just want to figure out uh, welding this is the generally good starting point then we go to level two TIG welding it uses the same technology arc technology for heating however the electrode side is using tungsten now if you are familiar with periodic table you know for a fact that tungsten is very resistant to thermal system what does that mean that simply means if you take pure tungsten it will retain its structural integrity and physical form for very high temperature like to melt this puppy you have to exceed 3000 degrees Celsius so this puppy is stable like high heat environment is like bro I got this and that's why we use it inside a filament bulb filaments we used to use this so tungsten got this you got the electrode now again because it does not have that coating does not have that melting part where like you know coating is melting away and creating shielding gas you have to have an independent gas system generally argon is used sometime argon is mixed with carbon dioxide to reduce cost and like a bit of compromise but again if you can't afford it what's the point of it so argon or carbon dioxide has been generally used now it has two modes of operation that torch that is in your hand that size will not change that's a very good advantage another aspect you can do fusion mode basically you can take two thin sheet metal and just meld them together now is that good well good you do not require filler material for machine systems and all that yes it's very important however it creates a weak spot where the welding is is it airtight yes you can make an airtight system but be mindful you have to use a very thick metal so that weak spot is also uh, you know strong enough but that's good enough especially if you are doing decoration pieces if you are doing something that's like you know just have to hold its shape forms and all that jazz people use fusion mode uh, so it's simple but weak then if you want to be like absolutely strong it's like i made this puppy this has to be rigid structural thing then you will always see people have a torch then they have a giant rod this rod is a filler rod it used the same thing that was in the stick so this does not have a flux because it's expecting you to use argon gas for fluxing if you use without argon gas many machines will slap flat out not work it knows uh, how to detect argon so it's like bro not good so the rod is very raw it does not have any flux built into it so you have to be providing the shielding gas 
but this provides very high uh, quality welds like really high quality and because the uh, height of the torch is not changing it's very easy to reach a very high level of polish so you can make a uh, basically final part which is very high polish and if you have seen any good welding done you will easily feel like hey somebody stacked uh, you know coins around it it's like very awesome so this is stick this is level two from stick one now we'll let's go to level three which we generally call mig so it's basically bigger brother of a uh, tig system now tig has a requirement if you really want to make a strong one you have to use filler and filler requires a, another hand basically it's a two hand operation you have to keep feeding it and because your hand have human limitations you cannot just carry a like 10 meter long rod and just like you know make a big weld you have to keep changing it that creates fundamental weak spots wherever you are changing it like you have to either wait for it to cool down things have to happen which degrades the quality of weld and you are a human so again you cannot be damn sure that i'm feeding it exactly the same rate so mig welding takes the same technology of tick adds a hollow core to that and that inside that hollow core there is a filament that filament is almost similar to like how 3d prim uh, printing works only instead of uh, plastic pla or abs it's metal so this allows the filler rod to literally come out the torch so you will only uh, you, the easiest way to spot uh, where somebody is doing TIG or MIG is MIG person will only use one hand like to do work it may use another hand to you know hold the workpiece but only one hand is needed because if you press the button you will notice hey there is a stick coming out it's almost like a soldering iron which has its own solder so that's how MIG works now it delivers everything through the torch that's the awesome part and some designs have uh, the basically the filler system is built in such a way that it's like almost like a flux core and the benefit of that is that it requires only cheaper carbon dioxide to, as a shielding gas and some have been pushed to a point where you do not even need that so you do not need a gas so in some places where like this puppy is not that expensive to buy and is very easy to carry but gas bottles they are very big and heavy so gas itself is cheap but transporting costs sometimes become so high that people like dude it's better to buy expensive uh, spool than then multiple tanks of like you know that gas fancy gas so many times people go with that fancy core option where they can use either carbon dioxide or sometimes raw this has side effect of very complex like it has to figure out the basically gas flow it has to figure out the electrical output pulsing frequency and all that just uh, and high voltage it has to figure that part and it also has to physically feed something through the tube and uh, you know maintain the constant switch so it's a, almost like a 3d printer metal 3d printer some people have actually made it out of this so it's a very complicated system however once you pay this amount of money this amount of hassle you do get the luxury of super duper fast speed if done correctly basically it's like that it's very fast how fast uh, many uh, if you type basically robot welding system generally most of them are mixed system because again a robot arm you do not have the luxury of okay i have one robotic arm another robotic arm feeding in the filler yeah that's not gonna work so flat out mig is used for robotic welding it is very fast very precise and if you master this puppy flat out you're like i got this i can uh, you know freaking manufacture a submarine submarines actually use this technology so very serious technology now this is what we call uh, technology that you can buy it's something that you can buy off of amazon but generally there is an even next level of advanced technology which are used for factory mass manufacturing or you know nuclear power plant structure kind of thing so generally laser welding is used now one thing you have to understand we are talking about heat now if you're familiar with heat you know the fact that it can bend things including metal and given the fact that you are dealing with temperature that can physically melt metal it will not hold its strength and you can see that if uh, amateur does your welding job you will easily you know, let's say it's a flat rod it will be bent like this wherever the welding is happening because of the thermal distortion so people want the ability to dump heat but only a small area it's like only here not one millimeter left one one meter right only here this is very difficult to do so generally TIG, let's say it has an area of area of effect of let's say one millimeter square you want to let it one millimeter square would be affected by the heat it will have heat damage uh, you go to MIG because it's more controlled more refined it's a bit smaller now you go to laser this puppy is like whoosh, very small so metals aside it you now basically next to it, it will not get damaged which is very critical for some structural where it's like dude this has to be absolutely strong you can use that so it's very fast it's dumping a lot of energy in a very small area so it can go very 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 fast and it uses filler uh, also if you need to because again if you are welding something that does not require structural oomph or it's a uh, fat enough where the weld is no longer the weak part uh, you can work without uh, basically what we call uh, filler material but generally it's used and it also requires shielding as generally argon because of the ludicrously high speed so it's a laser welding generally used in car industries where they were uh, you know manufacturing hundreds of equipment where they're like go 
where they need super fast speed uh, laser welding is generally preferred now there is a, another big daddy of this puppy which is electron beam welding now if you are familiar with the fact that laser is only 30 percent efficient no matter how much power you put in only 30 percent comes out as a photon uh, electron beam welding has the advantage that 90 percent of it comes out as an energy that is going to be deposited on your workpiece so you can have the same well, let's say 10 kilowatt versus 10 kilowatt but electron would be much more powerful and because electron as a physical thing it's no longer just a, like a wavelength kind of thing it's a physical thing it requires a vacuum to operate uh, so it's a very big expensive equipment and you have to make a vacuum chamber uh, but does have the benefit you do not need shielding as there is nothing to react to so it does allow you to work with exotic material which are like you know fancy reactive at high temperature almost everything starts to react with everything including helium also so you can also for many reasons people like to just work in a vacuum electron gun is like i got this it's basically turbocharged version of uh, old crt systems so this puppy is very powerful basically if you are, go to a nuclear power plant it's like okay what's inside the chamber basically that fuel rod assembly and all that just generally they are welded using this technology because this is very strong very powerful and it can melt through like you can take a thick metal and almost every metal, uh, welding technology will work on it the problem would be the damage area basically how much area is suffering through heat creep or things of that nature very huge laser will allow you to go very close this puppy will go even closer basically the, it will make it just a narrow slit and weld exactly exactly in that area so which is very desirable and it also has the ability to weld dissimilar metal basically you can take tungsten and mix it with zirconium or something like that so the zirconium is a ceramic and uh, yes people do use this puppy for ceramic also so it's a very complicated like you are dealing with thorium and things of that nature this is your guy so this is a very high end technology like a uh, laser is like a, a very uh, 3g kind of technology and this puppy is 4g kind of technology so this is advanced which is like if you have billions of dollars then you're going to deal with this generally you only used in factories or research lab so this was my presentation on welding i hope you got some idea of this vast industry of welding and if you liked it learn from it in that case please please the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching